and good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Ha-ha. This is a blessed day and opportunity. We want to thank God for the opportunity we have today to come together on the Lord's Day. Anybody glad about that? That today we have the happy privilege of being together four o'clock on a Saturday Sabbath afternoon to experience the blessings of God one more time in this cyberspace, in this virtual house. Good afternoon, Pastor D and Pastor Hill. Good afternoon, Dr. Manders, Pastor Hill, and to our virtual family. Yes, we are all family. Yes, we are all family. Whether you are part of our church or not, at this point, we are all family. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad about it. Y'all, I was glad when they said to me, let us come into the virtual house of the Lord. Anybody glad today to be in the virtual house on the Sabbath day? If you are, just put a little hand clap emoji, something just to let us know that you are glad to be in God's virtual house with us today. I don't want to say too much, Dr. Matters, because we got a lot going on this afternoon, and there are some power-filled anointed psalmists that are going to bless us real good, and then the preacher is going to bless us real good, and, and hey, listen, I'm just excited about this, man, so I'm going to sit back, relax, and be blessed. Y'all, let me just say this, all y'all that are on Facebook, on YouTube, thank you for joining us. We know this is sort of an odd time, but we wanted to honor time and make sure that you were here with us, so thank you so very much. Dr. Manners, it has been a privilege and an honor to be here with you. Pastor Hill, come on, man. This rose amongst these thorns. Help us out. Amen. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen, and good afternoon, audience. Happy Sabbath. I am excited. And if you weren't excited um, when you came into this platform, Pastor D certainly brings the excitement, the energy, the vigor. So bless God. And I echo his sentiments and our president's sentiments. I'm excited about what God is going to do for us this afternoon. So I'm going to cut my comment short so that we can proceed with this awesome program that God has laid out for us. God bless you as you worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. And these um, platforms are also shared with the ATV, be it a day delayed. We want to welcome also the ATV audience. And if you have missed any of the presentations, you can always go to the ATV. Last night was awesome. The preacher talked about the second coming of Christ. Amen. And I'm so glad today he also was in, in the Somerset space by yes. virtue of the uh, Zoom experience. And he preached an awesome word today. We had church. We had church. And now he's back again to give us a final word. want to give God thanks for his ministry, Dr. Rupert Bushner. And this afternoon, we promised you a concert today. We concert, uh, promised you a mini concert. But before we get into that concert, we just want to have a word of prayer. We're going to ask Pastor Hill to please bless um, this program today. May, may, and, and, and so we're going to ask that you pray, Pastor Hill, that this program will be blessed of God today. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you uh, for this glorious Sabbath day that you have carved out in time. And we come with hearts of gratitude, hearts of worship. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to overshadow this experience, um, that you would magnify yourself through the singing and the preach word. And Father, we just looked at heaven with anticipation. Thank you for what you've done over these two weeks. And we thank you, O oh God, for how hearts have been moved. And we thank you for what you are about to do today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. And in case anyone is uh, with us for the first time, I'm still going to make the offer, Pastor D. I'm still going to make the offer. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It's a free offer. We believe. And these are the truths that have been wrung out through the preacher all two weeks. And so if you are a guest, that's right. If you're on this platform today and you're a guest, it's not too late. We'll put the numbers up. We'll put the address up where you can email us and you can, we'll make this announcement also at the end, but you want to make sure that you get and secure your copy of this volume. You'll be blessed um, by doing so. And we thank you again 
for being a part of our experience today. We've had many of you who have been part of the experience for the last two weeks. We've made contact with you. We have, have actually placed the book in your hands. And so we want to thank God for your participation. We will be in contact some more because we're going to study the word together and be edified and have no fear because we're on the rock Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to say amen about that. So we are excited about that, Pastor. D, anything you want to say, Pastor D, before we zoom on in into that concert piece? What I want to say is that you all, not only have you been faithful in your attendance, you have been faithful in partnering with us. Remember, we said it, we didn't just want to bless people spiritually with the word of God, but we recognize that the unprecedented economic and social unrest that we have had, economic unrest has really interrupted many people. And there are many people out there who have been struggling with just how to make ends meet. And we also know that some of us have been a ble have been blessed by God even throughout COVID. And so thank you to each and every one of you that have given. That's right, you gave because we had monies, but you gave some of your own money so that we could partner together. And Dr. Manners, I want you to know, I was talking to someone even this morning as I was moving about through to, uh, to between my two churches. And someone said to me, Pastor D, I still want to give to the series. How do I do it? I said, well, listen, are you tech savvy? They said, now, Pastor, you know I'm not tech savvy. I'm not tech savvy. I know nothing about that. I said, well, all you have to do is put your monies in an envelope put no fear on it and submit it to the Somerset Church. You can either do it Monday through, th through Thursday, one through five, or on Fridays, one through four. If those times don't work with you, then call the Somerset Church, 234-2979, and we will arrange a time that's convenient for you so that you can give. And remember what we always say, 100% of the proceeds that are given to us during this series with envelopes marked no fear, 100% of that goes out to help people in need. And we were helping people right up until last night and we just want to say thank you guys for your continued support throughout this entire series not just being here but also financially helping us to be a blessing economically in somebody else's life y'all have been hey man y'all have been great and i just want to say on behalf of dr manders pastor hill myself and the churches we represent thank you for not only being here physically or virtually i should say but also giving physically of your of your uh monies and your time and your time so thank you. Amen, amen, amen. There will be some features today that are live in the house. We are working on that. And so we want to thank God for those who have consented to be uh, in the virtual space to uh, give their talents tonight. There's a, there's, there's a young gentleman. He's in Huntsville right now. Um, he is going to open up this mini concert. I've seen him before. I know a little bit about him. He's around 32 years uh, of age. Um, he's a Bermudian born. And um, he is the son of Sister Claudette Manders and Kenneth Manders, and his name is Stephen Manders. He and his group, uh, Stephen Manders and Decree, are going to open us up this afternoon, and we thank God for their ministry. We welcome Stephen Manders and Decree at this time. This song just says, Be still. You know that I am God. Hallelujah. Come on, Naomi, sing it. Be still. Be still, be still, and know that I am God. I am God. Be still, be still, and know that I am, know that I am God. Come on, let's sing it together. Be still. This is my favorite part. It says, I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted among the nations. All generations. All generations. It says, I'll be exalted. I'll be exalted among the nations. All generations. And know that I am God.
He's God over your circumstances. It says, I know that I am God. Bigger than cancer, diabetes, put in parts. I know. Come on, soprano, say, I am God. Know that I am. Altos, I am God. No, I am God. Come on, let's put it in parts. I am God. The same God that will heal you. He will cure you. Bigger than any situation. Hallelujah. And no, I am God. Let's take it up. I am God. Sing it. Sing, I am God. He's got the whole world in his hands. No, I am God. Take it up. I am God. No matter what your situation is today, just know that he's God and know It says God will take care of you. It says I know I am God. Come on, that's a good place to worship him. Just think about everything he's done for you. He's kept you through this season. You're still here, you're still alive. Just know that he is God. He's bigger than COVID. He's bigger than anything you are going through. Just know that he's God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, and know that I am God, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen, amen, amen. Straight out of Psalms 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Thank God for that song and thank God for the words of that song taking us back to our God. What do you say? Now, I do see in the chat, I can't hear anything. And yet someone else is saying awesome. So just want to make sure everybody's hearing the word of God tonight. And this afternoon, we want to thank God for Stephen again. I want to say this. Stephen got his start uh, right here in Bermuda. I want to thank two people, two individuals who helped him with his music industry, his music talents. Um, they are none other than Gail Newton-Taylor, who uh, gave him piano lessons. Kudos to Gail Newton-Taylor. Come on and say amen. Who gave him piano lessons, gave him his start. And of course, Owen Ellsworth Simons is another one that he that mentored Stephen. And I just want to give God thanks for these two individuals. You know, we are not who we are by ourselves. There's always someone who's helping you along the way. So as parents of Stephen, I just want to say thank you to those of those two individuals. And I'm sure there are others because we are all influencing some way, somebody along the way. So again, thank God for those individuals who are mentor i see somebody saying sound is fine on my end i can hear now all right praise god everybody can hear now so want to thank god for that piece there stephen mandus and decree we're going to have another song stephen by the way is uh, serving as the associate minister there at the oakwood university church i was watching from someone else's house today he was doing a virtual choir thing there at um with the breath of life um pastor dr carlton peabody bird right there at oakwood university and i did see grace dorsey lendy one who also has been a part of the experience here in bermuda 
and she was singing one of his songs under his wings. What a powerful experience it was today. So we want to thank God for this young man, his ministry, and for those who minister in song because God has given a ministry to everyone and thank God for the ministry in song. We're going to have one more by Stephen Mendes and Decree at this time. We've come to give him glory. We've come to give him honor. The song just says, God, we bless your name. I don't know about you, but we came to give him glory. Let's sing it together, Decree. Be your glory. It says all the honor. Now and ever. Now and ever, God, we bless your name. I hope you came to give him glory. It says, be all glory. All of the honor. honor. It says, now and ever. We bless your name. name. Come on, let's put it in parts. It says, and we. It says, Jehovah reigns. Your name. Adoration. It says glory to his name. We bless your name. Your name. It says God Almighty. That's the whole song. We've come to give him glory. It says, be all glory. Be glory. It says, all the honor. honor. Now and ever. Now and ever we, bless we bless your name. Your name. And we will pray. It says Jehovah reigns. Your name in adoration. It says glory to his name. It says we lift your name. In adoration. It says glory to his name. Come on, we lift your name. Your name. In adoration. It says glory to his name. Says we lift your name, your name, in adoration. Says glory to His name. Come on, we've come to give Him glory. We lift your name, your name, in adoration. Says glory to his name. Glory to his name. Your name. In adoration. It says glory to his name. In adoration, 
in adoration. It says glory to his name. It says glory to his name. Glory to his name. We lift your name. We lift your name. In adoration. It says glory to his name. Come on, we've come to good and glory. Glory to his name. The angels cry, holy, holy, holy. We sing glory to his name, glory. Come on, worship him from where you are. It says glory to his name, sing glory. says we bless your name come on sing it we, we bless hallelujah your name. come on sing it out one time god almighty reign god come on that's a good place to worship him hallelujah come on give him glory god we thank you for everything you've done you're worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Holy, holy. Hallelujah. Ah, we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice you made for us. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to his name. It takes me to Revelation chapter 4, Pastor. Bible says there, and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Praise God for that. What do you say, Pastor? Talk to me. Amen. You know, I uh, always, Dr. Manders, um, whenever I see Stephen, because when I first came home, obviously you were the senior pastor and I was uh, your associate. And so he was uh, one of the youth um, that I had with me. And um, to see what God has done in his life is indeed a blessing. And while you give kudos to those who helped mentor him along the way in the form of Sister Taylor and Brother Owen, I want to applaud you and Sister Manders for giving him the platform and the foundation uh, to which he was able to spring forth into the man that he is now. And um, we praise God for you and for our First Lady of our conference um, for how you have helped him and nurtured the gift of God inside of him. And I'm with you. I, I still believe that there is a little preacher in that young man. I believe and, uh, <laughs> it. I believe it. But I'm so glad that he's chosen to honor God in his usage of this gift. And so kudos to you and Sister Manders for uh, nurturing that in him. Glory to his name. I, I will share this with you, Pastor. You may laugh at this. Hey, Pastor, I'm blown away. Stephen is truly blessed with such musical talent, but he has your voice. <laughs> I know you were like that, and he saw us like you. But he said, but then they said, "Red is talking." <laughs> we thank God for for gifts, and these gifts are given for none other reason than to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. So we praise God for our youth and adults alike. And uh, the, the Seventh Day Adventist Church is a blessed house. When it comes to music, I see as I look on the on the Zoom um, experience, I see people who are sitting there who are blessed with musical talents. I'm not going to call their names because I don't want to get myself in trouble. But there are mentors on this Zoom experience right now 
who have blessed this island, blessed the world with musical gifts and talents. Nothing like hearing good Adventist music um, in the house. And of course, all music, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Pastor, there's some blessings coming through um, this church and we thank God for the gift, the gift of music. We're gonna go forward now. There is a young man by the name of George Powell. He is the minister of music at the Alpha Seventh-day Adventist Church there in Austin, Texas, where the senior pastor is Pastor Laurent Grovener, who's been one of our Tuesday night uh, preachers on this platform. And so we're gonna move on now to hear the ministry of George Powell. Hear ye him as he ministers in song at this time. This ain't no ordinary So I'ma give it all I have in this moment. This ain't no ordinary. This ain't no ordinary. This ain't no ordinary. Listen, let me tell the story about a woman with an issue. Had it 12 long years, didn't know what to do. She heard about a man coming to her town. So she fell on her knees and she crawled on the ground. what she said if I could only touch but the hem of his garment I'ma give it all I have in this moment this ain't no ordinary I'ma give it all I have. So I'ma give it all I have. And right in this moment, listen. Let me tell the story about a man from Galilee. Woo. He healed the lame, caused the blind to see. <laughs> this man. Trade crucified for you and me. This man only wanted to make us free. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. But in three days, he rose with all power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in three days, he rose with all power. So I'ma give it all so I'll have, it all I'll have in, in this moment. moment. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody ought to give him praise. Hallelujah.
Hey, hey, we want to praise God for Brother George Powell with that powerful, powerful message and song. This ain't no ordinary worship, man. This ain't no ordinary song. And I believe, brothers and sisters, that when we begin to take an introspective look on our own journey and matriculation through Christ, we'll realize that each of us, that song is really our testimony, that we all have our own relationship, our own walk with Christ, which makes our response to him, Pastor Hill, to be unique our own. This isn't any ordinary worship, and our song isn't any ordinary song. As a matter of fact, Dr. Manders, uh, I'm told, and, and I, I brought this out this, this morning in church, that I'm told uh, that, that we all have a, a song that will be uniquely ours in the book of Revelation. Yes, sir. And we, I'm told that in the book of Revelation that there will be a song that yes, only sir. the redeemed will be able to sing. Yes, sir. Only those past the hill who have overcome uh, by the, the word of their testimony and by the blood of the lamb. We, we have a unique song, y'all. And so I'm looking Amen. forward to when we get to heaven um, and we'll see just how much value we had towards God. That God thought that we were worth it. That God thought that we were worth saving, that we were worth dying for. And I want to use that segue to bring us back brother george to bring us this wonderful song that speaks to just how much god thought we were worth in doing what he did amen amen you made me deep in my despair to show me you would never leave me there you claim because I was made for so much more. I am your child, and I'm worth fighting for. So heavy, with the weight of my mistakes, you carried me and refused to let me sink under the pressure. You meant for me to soar. I am your child. And I'm worth fighting for Eyes haven't seen Ears haven't heard All you have planned for me And nothing can separate me from your love When there's so much more Still worth fighting for Now I'm moving By faith and not by sight Towards victory by the power of your might, you're straightening out my path and opening every door. I am your child, and I'm worth fighting for. Ears haven't heard all that you planned for me. Separate me from your love when there's so much more still work and that's why I'm pressing toward the mark because the calling on my life is worth and I'll keep my mind stayed on you Jesus
the beginning. What's in front of you is better than what's behind you. Come on. Anybody know you got the victory? Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Because victory, I said victory, I said victory. Today is mine, and it's in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name, the strong name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call. the victory oh yeah yeah hallelujah thank you jesus sounds like somebody is having church up in here eyes have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Somebody want to say amen about that. I'll tell you, the man is on fire with his musical gift. Pastor, Pastor Hill, he, he's, 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 he's in the house singing. One day, I guess we're all going to sing like that. Pastor Hill, what do you say? Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that day. You know, he sang that song, We Have the Victory. And, you know, for somebody that is vocally challenged, you know, I covet that gift. I covet that gift. And when I get to glory, when I get to glory, I'm going to sing and shout victory. <laughs> so I'm always excited when I see people, you know, I kind of vicariously live through them when they lift up the name of Jesus. But he gives us gifts. Some You got to stay in your lane. Some of us can preach. Some <laughs> of us can sing. And I just celebrate the power of the preach word through song. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's a song that says, but until then. <laughs> until I'll, then, I'll stay in my right. lane until then <laughs> yes. I'll let the singers sing well yes, we sir. are blessed this afternoon we've been blessed oh, oh, these last two weeks with the lovely melodious gifted voice of none other than Tara Goddard she was a member of the Somerset Seventh Day Adventist Church but she's flown away on wings but she's zooming in live this afternoon i think we ought to put our hands together and show tara some love put those hands up on the screen and let her know that you've been blessed all week tara good to see you live this afternoon in the virtual space to bring us some music before we have dr bush to come and give a final word so tara thank you so much again for the gift that God has blessed you with. Thank you for being a part of the experience. No fear, the Lord is the, the rock of our salvation. The platform is yours. Hi, everyone. I don't know if it's still Sabbath where you are, but it is. I'm so happy to be sharing this moment with you guys. I want to thank Pastor Mandas, 
Pastor D, Pastor Hill, and Pastor Bushner for allowing me to have this opportunity to sing and minister to you guys.
Amen, 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 Tara. We thank God for that song. I want to be where you are. Dr. Rupert Bushner is the co-pastor for the Patmos Seventh-day Adventist Church. He is one who loves the Lord. He has been a pastor par excellence, got his start in the Allegheny West Conference. He's been the family life director there, the youth director there. He's been a conference evangelist there. He's also served as the chaplain for the Oakwood University. We thank God for his ministry. We know that he loves the Lord. He has a way of breaking it down. And right now he is the speaker for the No Fear, The Lord is My Rock series. We have been glad to have Dr. Bushner for two solid weeks and now his last preachment. I want to say thank you, Doc, for being with us. And uh, we, we were blessed this morning. And here you are back again tonight. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you. Thank you and Pastor Hendrickson and Pastor Hill for the beautiful, you know, just hosting this. You all made it so awesome. And I am blessed of God to be here. Thank God for your ministry, uh, Pastor Manders. And the songs were incredible. I, I'm, I started my watch and I'm going to go ahead and just stand up. I remember back in the day, Sandy Robinson used to tell us, you want to stand up so you can be seen speak up so you can be heard, then sit down so you can be loved. And so I'm going to do that ministry right now. But I'm praising God this evening because the songs were incredible. In fact, Stephen Manders, your son, um, my nephew in the ministry, I thank God for his gifts. I thank God for a decree. They blessed us with some powerful, powerful music. And then George Powell lit the flames. And then Tara Goddard, man, awesome, awesome concert. I'm lit. You know, as I looked at and listened to their songs, be still and know I am God. Know that I am God. And then adoration, give God the glory. We bless your name. We lift your name, honor and glory to your name now and forever. And then old George Powell talked about there is no ordinary song. There's no ordinary worship. God is greater. And I like that part where it says, I'm going to. Now, this is a shout part. I am going to give it all that I have in this moment. I'm going to give it all that I have in this moment. Let me tell the story. He only wants us to be set free. God wants us to tell our story. And then, Sister Goddard, for glory, for your glory, God, for your glory. You know, that's what it's all about right now, for the glory of God. And it is amazing to me when I look on the platform and I see Pastor Hill with her gift and Pastor Hendrickson and Pastor Man, Dr. Manders. And, and then I hear all the songs, singing all the songs that I've heard. And then I look at the different personality. You know why? That's what the Bible means when it says no flesh will glory because God is God of all. You know, it's amazing how God can take different personalities and still through the different personalities, God can be praised. You know, it's almost like a prison when light goes through a prison and it comes out on the other side in a different color or different arrays of color. That's how it is with us, our personality. We shine through the glory of God and God shines through us and the color brings a different rainbow. And we thank God tonight. We thank God this evening for the gifts he's given to the church. And for the next few minutes, I want to look at what God is telling us right now. God wants us to give him glory and honor and praise forever and ever, no matter what. Even in this moment, even in the moment when you might find yourself in a rock and a hard place with your back up against the wall. I had the privilege of going through the Zoom and I've seen so many different names and faces on this Zoom platform. And I want to say to each one of you, may God continue to give you the strength and the power. May God continue to enlighten you. May God continue to strengthen you as you walk on this journey. And I want to commend you for being here night after night. And even right now, I believe there is a word from the Lord. And so let me go ahead. I love talking to Jesus and I love more than him talk. I love more when he talks to me and I love it when he begins to talk to me because in my imagination, I begin to hear the word of God, but then I begin to hear my root. I begin to hear root my voice and together with hearing God's truth in my imagination, Man, I pull this thing together and then I start I'm becoming an, an, um, enamored. I become enamored 
and I become ill. I become um, enlightened with the word of God to the point where I become like a, 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 a fuse or a, a machine where I want to just share with everybody what I see. And so for the next few minutes, I want you to see something that God shared with me. Just thinking about God's grace and goodness and mercy and all the songs we've heard. Let us pray. Father God, bless us in these moments. In these last words, may your word be edified, glorified. May we be lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a text of scripture, and I, I, um, I, I, I want to, you know, excuse me if I go fast because I know my time is short, but man, you got to, I need you to do me a huge favor. Number one, I need you to go back and read Daniel chapter three, the entire chapter. And what I'm going to share, I'm going to give you the cliff notes. You know the story, so do not force me to have to embellish and set it up. You know the context. The Bible says King made a decree that he wanted everybody to worship in verse five. The Bible said at the time, at the sound of the certain sound, the music, the heart, I want you to worship. And the Bible says, and whoever, verse six, whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast, that word immediately, immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Now they made a decree. Now we know when the Persians and the Babylonians made a decree, it was impossible to undo that decree. So he says, now watch what the Bible said. He said, immediately, whoever does not bow down will be thrown into the fiery furnace. Now, watch how the favor of God is already inactive, right? I mean, and, and being activated. Watch how favor of God. And that's why you got to read this for yourself. It says there, and then in verse 12, there are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs, O king, who did not pay due regard to you, and he made it personal, and they do not serve the God or worship the golden image you set up. Now, now watch this, say, I love the Bible. It says, now verse 14, verse 14 says, and Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them, is it true? Is it true? I mean, the word on the street is, I'm hearing you brothers are not bowing. Now, they got, he got a reliable sir, so I got a reliable source. It was not fake news. It came back to Nebuchadnezzar that there were certain brothers who were not bowing. Now, remember the decree said immediately. However, it seems to me that there's some negotiation going on. And notice what the Bible says. Then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave a command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke to the brothers. Is it true? Again, that word, is it true? I'm hearing some stuff. Now, I want to be verified. I want to make sure I'm not mistaken. Is it true? Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image, which I've set up? Now, 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 if you're ready, I'm going to give you another chance. If you're ready, I believe these boys were ready the first time. You know, that's why I'm reading the Bible, and, and it says, he says, when you are ready, now I believe they were already ready. See, it's too late. Let me just say this point right here. When people start asking, what would Jesus do? You're already behind the eight ball. It's too late. The question is, what would you have, what would Jesus had done? See, remember we talked about getting ready before the battle. See, right now during this two week revival, I'm telling you right now, somebody is going to go into something next week. Somebody going to face some giants next week. And it's going to be too late to start preparing for the battle when God gave you two weeks to set your sail, to get your mind right, to get your heart right, to hear truth. You see, God always sends grace before he sends destruction. He always sends mercy before he sends the hammer fall. So, so God prepares us for battles. It's just that sometimes we're not aware of the preparation or we take it for granted. Now, the Bible says, he says, now, when you are ready, when you are ready, if you are ready, we're going to do this thing again. He said, now, if you're ready, I'm going to give you, that was rehearsal. I know I said I should have thrown you in immediately, but that, that was rehearsal. Okay, we're going to try this thing one more time. The Bible says, now, we're going we're gonna to play the psalm street. We're going to play the same songs. In fact, no, we're going to play the radio editions, and we're going to remix them so they can play a little longer so we can give you a chance to respond. And notice the Bible says, I made good, but if you do not worship, if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fire, and then watch this question. Oh, my God. See, oh, who is who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? I, I, who is the God who will deliver you from my hand? That sounds like in Exodus 
chapter five, verse one and two, when Pharaoh said, who is God? I don't know him and I'm not letting you go. It's amazing how these heathen despots, these kings, these rulers have amnesia and don't know who God is. But after God took, Nebi, um, Ebi, um, took, um, the, um, took Pharaoh, he took him through those 10 plagues, which were Bible studies, he knew who God was. So every time you ask that question, who is God? Get ready, you're gonna find out. Who is God? Once you start asking that interrogative, once you start asking that question and put it on the table, believe me, God will reveal who he is. Who is God? So watch this, saints. God is, God is about to give another Bible study, and it might be called fire. It might be called um, um, fiery furnace 101. I don't know, but God always have a way of making people aware of who he is. And if you don't know, you're going to find out. If you don't know, you're better ask somebody notice what the text says shadrach meshach after he responded this is my last word right here in fact i got about five minutes no he said 10 to 20 so i got about 10 minutes okay here you go 10 minutes and who is god who is god this is what the king said nebuchadnezzar said who is the lord who will deliver you from my hands that's kind of bold right there and then now verse 16 here's the answer Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, I love it, I love it, I love it. Now, come on, y'all. Y'all got to rejoice with me because all I'm doing is giving a sanctified Bible study. The text says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered. And notice what they said. They said, they, what? <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, first of all, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Oh, I love it. I love it. And he asking if they're ready. They already, they already started the fight right there. They said, we don't even need to talk to you about this. We don't need a, we don't need negotiation. We don't need a second chance. We don't need a third chance. Our minds were made up from day one. We don't need to get ready. We don't need to talk to you. In fact, we already got our minds made up because before we ever come up, came up, before we ever came up in here. Our minds were ready because we knew there was an edict about worshiping. We had made our minds up long time ago that we would worship no other God. So we really don't need to talk to you about this right now. That's why I'm saying we got to get ready before the battle ever starts, brothers and sisters. It's too late to start trying to get your words together. The Bible tells me that if you just study and pray, the Holy Ghost will bring back to your remembrance what you need to say. When you're standing in front of courts and kings and queens, God will give you a word when you just get ready. Fill your mind up with the word of God. Get 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 away from everything else and pray and fast and ask God, ask God for the power. See, preparation. I'm, I'm rushing y'all, but you got to prepare yourself because there's some battles that's coming next week. In fact, there's some battles that you're going to face tonight. There's some battles that's going to come tomorrow and Tuesday and Thursday and four. There's some battles. And so notice what the text says. He says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, O king, we really don't need to talk to you, but we're going to do you a favor. And we're going to say this in verse 17. If that is the case. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. The boy said, if that's the case, in other words, you're going to do you and we're going to do us. We know what you're going to do. We're going to do what we're going to do. Now, we know you got this decree out there. We know you want people to bow down and serve and worship your God. But let us tell you this. If you're going to do what you're going to do, I think because God has given all of us the power of choice, we're going to do what we're going to do. I love it. Christians, you are not stuck. You just stayed too long. Oh, I'm going to write a book. That's the name of our book I'm going to write. You ain't stuck. You just stay too long. No circumstances, no problem should hem you in where you can't choose to serve God no matter what. I like that. I like that. This boy, these boys were some bad boys. They said, if that is the case, oh, he says, if that is the case, number one, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But then I love that next verse, verse 18. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? But if not, let it be known to you, O king, and everybody else up in here that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. There's a point to think about right there. In other words, whenever you worship a god, you're going to serve that god. And you have to ask yourself, the god you serve, is it a god worthy of your worship? 
You see, there's two things in the text that I don't have time to expound or embellish. But he says we are not going to serve or worship. See, it was more than just worshiping God. It was their service also that is demanded when you give worship. You see, let me say this. Whatever you worship, you're actually serving. Oh, you don't you missed that. You missed that. See, worship is not just adoration and lifting up hands. Worship is where you spend most of your attention and your money and your time to. See, wherever you spend most of your mind and spend most of your interest, wherever your heart, that's where your treasure is. Wherever your treasure is, your heart is there. So whatever you're worshiping, you're going to have to serve. And whatever you serve, is it worthy of your worship? Watch this, saints. The Bible says this. He says, let it be known we're not bowing down. But notice what happens. Notice what happens. And this is just my word right here. The Bible says they threw him in the fiery furnace. And a lot of times we shout for the deliverance. But the shout is not in the deliverance. The shout should be in their resolve. Oh, let me say that again. The shout is not in their deliverance. The shout is in their resolve. Why are we surprised when God get us out when he said he would in the first place? Wow. Why are we surprised when deliverance come, when God already promised us we would? See, I'm more shocked. I'm more, I'm, I tell you, I'm more shocked. I'm more shocked at people who can't make up their mind than I am when God brings us out. Because God has never lost a case. He always brings people out, but we don't always find people faithful. But if God could ever find a group of people who are ever faithful and their resolve is solved, you don't have to worry about the miracles. You don't have to worry about repercussions and consequences. You don't have to worry about outcomes and what it's going to look like when it's finished. Because if you trust God, he's going to always come through. See, that's my word right there. If you trust God, you don't have to worry about this. The shout is not that. He delivered them. This is the shout right here. Their minds were made up to serve God no matter what. And because their minds were made up to serve God no matter what, God wanted to bless them with an the opportunity to show them off and so that this heathen king can get to know him. Oh, you missed that. You see, every time you get in a situation, it's not the situation you're in. And you shouldn't put your stopwatch on talking about how long, God, when I'm going to get out. No, you ought to be able to bless God while you're in it. You ought to ask God, what is it that you want to do while I'm in it more so than getting me out? of it. The Hebrew boys had made up minds and the interest of them was not about them. It was about who God was and they were determined they would not let him down. And look at the benefits, what happens when you and I do that Not I close. He says here, verse 25, look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Oh, 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 hold on. Stop the press. This is the King Nebuchadnezzar who just said, uh, who is God? He didn't know. No, 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 no. I believe he knew God, but he only knew him theoretically, like some people. He didn't really know him experientially. He knew him theoretically. He knew God, but he didn't yield to God. How do I know that? Because here he says, look what the text says. The fourth is like the son of God. So then if you go on and read it, verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, blessed be the God. Wow. At first he didn't know God. God allowed these boys to go through a trial, thrown into a fiery furnace. And from their experience, somebody who didn't know God now knows God. Could it be sometimes trials come in your life, not for you, but that somebody else has the privilege of knowing God because of the way you live your life? Wow. Thank you, Jesus. That's all I can say. Thank you, God or whatever comes my way, because it's not always about me. Notice what the text says, and I'll close with this. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent an angel. Man, this boy got Bible study. I mean, just from there living their life, going into a fiery furnace, now he even knows who, who, who was sent. <laughs> and it's capitalized because he knows it's Jesus. Wow. The text says in verse 28, don't believe me, read it in your Bible. It says, the angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's words and yielded their bodies. Wow. You see, there's so many principles you can extrapolate out of that. Because they were willing to yield their bodies, they frustrated a decree that meant nothing. And notice what the text says. 
that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own God. And verse 29 and 30, and I'm closing. Therefore, he said, I make a decree. I make a decree because there is no other God who can deliver like this God. Wow. It's amazing. 18 minutes, two minutes left. Today, today, as you're hearing God's voice, trust him. Never give up. The last two weeks, I was just saying all of that, that you might believe and that belief might lead to action. In other words, Jesus says in John, all these, th all these things were done that you might believe and believing you might believe on the son of God and believing on the son of God that you might have eternal life. My brothers and sisters, you're one choice from your breakthrough. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. We've been blessed and your word gives us confidence. And when you have confidence, it brings competence. Let me say that again, Father. That your children, my brothers and sisters, as we live this life, we can live it with no fear and we can live it with confidence. And when you have confidence, it brings competence and we'll live it to your glory forever and ever in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Dr. Bushner. You have, you have blessed us with your, your presence, your smile, your fellowship. You've blessed us with your humor. You've blessed us most of all by making God's word plain for the last two solid weeks. And for this, we give God praise. Right now, I believe Tara Goddard is going to give us one number. Then we have some great announcements to make to you before you leave this platform. You don't want to leave without that. So let's have Tara Goddard at this time. And then we're going to give you those great announcements and then have the benediction. Thank you so much.
That came through, Tara. <laughs> all the way from England. Yes. It came through. It zoomed all the way through. We praise God. Put your hands together for Tara Goddard and blessing us with her ministry to the Lord, blessing his people. We thank God for you, girl. Thank you. Pat. Miss you here in Bermuda, but we thank God for Zoom, able to connect with you. And yes. Thank you, God, for your family, for being with, you, a God. part of the experience. We really, we're blessed. And thank again, you. Pastor. Thank you so much. Put your hands together for Tara Goddard. She's been our singing evangelist for two solid weeks. Amen. One day we're going to sing like you, girl. <laughs> Amen. Pastor D, I'm not sure. I don't see your face, but Pastor Hill, I see you. We want to go to our thank you list and put a big thank you up, after which we're going to give you a crucial announcement. But let's quickly go to our thank you list. We, we say thank you to Tara because she has been the nightly soloist. And so that is something that we are so grateful for. And um, we want to thank God for Judy Appearman who recommended you. And she got that music for us every night. Thank you, Atta Appearman and June Deal in that mix as our secretary for the Somerset 7 8 Minutes Church. There it is. Right up top, Somerset are the ones who were the main sponsors for this. A big thank you to the Somerset Church who sponsored this venture and, and Rockaway and Restoration Ministries who partnered along with us, along with Pembroke Seventh-day Adventist Church. These four churches have been part of a Tuesday night experience and we thought together we would put this thing together and be blessed and bless others with it. You see the Adventist Book Center there because they are the ones who got the books that you shall receive as guests. So we thank God for Sister Carolyn James who made it happen. I thank God for the, the digital disciples as well. That's you. That's those of you who came on the platform and made it happen by being here on your nightly presence. We thank God for you. You have been faithful disciples. And then of course, digital disciples. Pastor D, are you there? If you're not there, I am here, Dr. Mandel. I got a pause when I see digital disciples and digital donors. So please. Listen, I am pause. here, man. I am here. And to the digital disciples, thank you very, very much. Not only have you all been in the, in the virtual building, but you've been pressing that share button. You've been pressing the share button on YouTube, on Facebook. You've been forwarding the flyer around on your WhatsApp messages, your group chat. So we say thank you to the digital disciples, to the digital donors. Yeah, y'all yes, who either Hello, Pastor D. Is, has he dropped out? Can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me. So I don't hear Pastor D. All right, so the digital donors are the ones who helped us 
reach out and touch people who were in need. Amen. We found someone out there, some buddies out there, and we just want to say a great big thank you because you didn't just come to be blessed, but you blessed others who were in need. That was part of our platform. We didn't want to just come and preach, but we wanted to be able to be a, an instrumental in helping people during this neat time of need. And a big thank you on behalf of those who received your gifts. Again, as Pastor D was telling us each night, none of those gifts stay with us. We dare not. We made the appeal. It's going out to help those who are in great need. So again, we want to thank God for the digital donors. Pastor D, you back? I am back. Can you all hear me? <laughs> we can hear you now. Go right ahead. Great, man. Again, to the digital donors, thank you so very much, man. Y'all have been special. You've helped us help out other people, and we just want to say thank you to y'all. Um, Sister June Dill, again, thank you. You've already been thanked. But Dr. Manders, we can't thank Sister June too much or enough, man. Uh, right. When I was up at Somerset, I didn't know my left from my right unless Sister June told me so. So thank you so very much. Sister Edda Pierman, thank you. Brother Calvin McNorton, he was instrumental in getting our banners out there and done. Um, so I want to say a huge thank Thank you to him. I want to say as well, thank you to my brother York. My brother York over there in Jamaica, he did That's a right. lot of the decal work that we see behind us, the virtual backgrounds, all the flyers and stuff, the designs for that, that came from him. So thank you. Uh, brother George Powell, Dr. Manders, George Powell with yes, those sir. songs, man, songs. We just say thank you to George Powell. And then brother Barry Richardson, Steve Ingham, the ATV team the ATV team for making sure that these meetings got on ATV uh, the next day. Um, we want to say thank you to them. Of course, man, Michael Simmons. Oh, yes. We all have to stop right now. Nothing would have happened with Michael, without Michael. I'm, Michael, I'm not sure if you can get your face in the place. We really, people need to see you. Our guests need to see you. So when they see you on the street, they can say, that's the guy that made it happen. You see us out front and you know us, but I'm not sure if Michael is going to come out, but I wanted you to put your hands together and give appreciation for Michael Simmons, who behind the scenes, because us pastors, we don't know what we're doing. We're just out here uh, rejoicing in God. But behind the scenes, Michael is the one that said, hey, this needs to go here. We need that there. And so we want to thank God for him and uh, the ministry that he has brought to us all through technology. Amen. All right. And then, of course, we also see a Steve and Mandus and Decree who blessed our hearts this evening with his music. Continue to keep that young man and his group in prayer. You know, many of his songs have been written out of his experiences. He's been in hospital beds and God would download a song while he is being still and knowing that I am God. So many of his songs, and I told him, I asked him just recently, he said he's got two new songs. He seemed like he has to go into the hospital to get two new songs. And so <laughs> so I'm so glad. I'm glad for the songs. I'm not happy for the hospital experiences. So I'm thankful. You keep him in your prayers, please. We've thanked Tara Goddard. Can't thank her enough. Steady voice every night throughout this two-week series. And Dr. Rupert Bushner. My goodness. Dr. Bushner, your face needs to be in the place, man. We see your name there, but we want to say thanks to Dr. Rupert Bushner. He has come in his own, look at him, his own unique, wonderful way. You know, after preaching for two weeks and then before the week was out, Bermuda Institute, our principal, I see him on the line, our principal talked to me about having him at the school. And of course, Dr. Bushner uh, has two grandchildren at BI. Come on and say amen, everybody. And so he was on his way from Florida driving and pulled over. He has this powerful illustration about peer pressure. It was awesome. You all need to go on YouTube and, and, and go back and see. I'm not sure if that one's on YouTube, but you need to go back on YouTube and see his other messages. But Dr. Bushner, man, listen, we will never forget this experience, it's been powerful. It's been real. It's been so satisfying. You have reached people who um, others would not reach. God has chosen you. He's wired you. He's blessed you. He's gifted you. And as a result, people are telling me, man, we got to get this guy back. <laughs> so again, on behalf of the Somerset Church, the Rockaway Church, Restoration Ministries, uh, Pembroke Church, on behalf of Bermuda Conference and Bermuda Institute, we say thank you. 
we say thank you. And please do thank Joanne because we know that during these two weeks, she was making things happen in the home and freeing you up to be with us nightly. And again, put your hands together for our friend, our preacher, Dr. Rupert Bushner, one who has blessed us well. Amen and amen. I do want to say thanks again to Pastor Michelle Hill and Pastor Damon D. Hendrickson, co-host of the No Fear, The Lord is Our Rock series. It, it, was a, it was a divine idea, I believe, for us to not go solo, but we came together and we come together often on Tuesday nights. And speaking of Tuesday nights, I think it's good right now to put a plug in. You should know that on Tuesday nights leading up to this experience, we've had preachers who love the Lord, who come each Tuesday night with power packed messages. This Tuesday night, this very Tuesday night coming, we have the likes of Dr. Alonzo Smith. He's the one who came earlier in the year, blessed our hearts. And of course, we aborted that mission, but he is back on Tuesday night and he's written a book out of his COVID experience. And so we want to invite all of us back Tuesday night to hear what he, this man of God has to say on how God delivered him. The devil tried to take him out, but he's back. You know, that conjunction got in the way of the devil, but God. And so he's back on Tuesday night. Please join us. Bring someone back on, on this virtual space. We call it Super Tuesday because God is going to do a great thing. And of course, most of all, we thank God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for being our shepherd, our God, our inspiration for making it all happen. Did I miss anything, Pastor D? No, Doc. We just want to um, say thank you to you for your leadership, not just as the pastor of the Summers of Seventh-day Adventist Church, but also as the president of the Bermuda Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Um, I think we all should uh, really appreciate the work that you do. Uh, many conference presidents do not have the added responsibility of having to pastor a church, and if they do, they pastor it from a distance because of their presidential duties, but your heart is one that loves people, loves the Lord, and has desired of seeing the gospel message go to all the world. And so even as the president and doing the fine job that you have done to lead us as a conference through this COVID season, you thought it not robbery to make sure that your church and that other churches would have an opportunity to partner with. And so on behalf of myself and Pastor Hill, we just want to say thank you for allowing us to partner with your churches, with your church and to partner with your vision and just the joy it's been over the last two weeks. I know I joked on it, but I need y'all to understand it for real. Um, I, I, we had always talked about team tagging, tag teaming when I was your associate, but the circumstances being what they were, we never got a chance. And here we are 15 years later, getting to redeem the time past the hill. Here we are 15 years later, getting this opportunity for all of us to get together like this and use these gifts. And this comes as a result of your leadership, Dr. Manders. So thank you so very much for that. Well, you know, I'm just one beggar showing another beggar where to find the bread. And the bread is Jesus Christ. Come on and say amen. Right. By the way, Pastor D, we don't have it all fleshed out, but, but, but we're going to give a little teaser. You want to come to this platform. You don't want to miss what's going to happen on this platform. So please stay tuned for further initiatives, further projects, further ministries that are going to bless Bermuda and the world through the digital disciple ministry. Come on and say amen. Pastor Hill, you as our prayer coordinator have been the, the rose in the midst of these thorns. And I can't thank you enough for your praying spirit, for just being there. Even during these tough times, you and I have lost a parent. And I know that's not an easy thing. And I tell you, Pastor Hill, you know, you're always giving and giving and giving and the Lord has to pour into us. So I want to thank God for you because even during this period, you have been still pouring out to everybody else and no one would have known because you haven't skipped a beat. So thank you for the ministries that you have been giving as Women's Ministries Coordinator for the Bermuda Conference. You too have had platforms where you have ministered for the women of Bermuda Conference. So I want to say thank you for that and for your prayer ministry. And I know at that in January, there's a prayer initiative, a 10 days of prayer coming up. And we want to say thank God for that. Whilst we have this platform, 
we won't keep you much longer, just to say December the 5th, there's going to be an initiative of the Bermuda Conference of Seven-Day Adventists. We have decided to help all frontline workers. We're going to start with our premier, the governor. We're going to start with the Ministry of National Security. We're going to um, talk, we're going to have the Minister for National Health or the Minister of Health for the Bermuda uh, government. We're going to have the grocery store um, workers. We're going to have people like Balco and other entities. We just want to bring them to the Hamilton Seven-Day Adventist Church there on King Street, December the 5th at four o'clock. It will be viewed virtually as well. We will practice social distancing. So please come because there's plenty of good room there, but we're gonna practice social distancing, but we think it good to give thanks and praise to God and honor and thank those who risked their lives during that COVID period when we were trying to be safe. So we wanna do that on December the 5th at four o'clock at the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church. So I thought I'd put that plug in there. So this is it. Oh man, what are we going to do tomorrow night? <laughs> but we'll be back. We shall be back. We'll see you back on this platform Tuesday night. Bring somebody past the hill. We're not going to let you get away without please blessing our hearts with a quick word and a word of prayer. And we're on our way. God bless you, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in. Have no fear. We've been, the Lord is the rock of our salvation. Amen. Well, praise God, everybody. All good things come to an end, but we know that God has some other things in store for us, and we rejoice in this experience, and so we want to go ahead and bow our heads and just thank God um, for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. For Dr. Bushner, you blessed our hearts tomorrow night. I don't know. I don't know, pastors. We're going to call them up and see, hey, pastor, you want to come on out again and bring us another word? So we thank God, and we just look forward to what's next. What's next in the digital to disciple arena. So let's bow our heads together, everybody. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for how you have blessed us over these two weeks, God. You have shown yourself mighty through your servant, through your psalmist, through the pastors. And Father, we just ask that you will continue, God, to allow this word to marinate in our hearts. We have so much to process and we have so much to thank you for. And so, Father, as you have guarded us up, as you have fortified us, May we continue to walk on the battlefield for our Lord. And we thank you, Father, that at the end of it all, we'll look to heaven and say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. And until then, God, we keep the faith in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Let the people of God say hallelujah and amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, one other person comes to mind, Beverly House, there on Hot 1075 been pushing this program. Thank mm -hmm. you, Beverly. We have a book just for her as well. And all you digital disciples who are guests, please call us. We got that book for you. It's in. We'll be calling you. We'll connect. May God richly bless you. It's our fear. Again, have no fear. The Lord is the rock of your salvation. Good night, everyone. And the Lord be praised. Amen. God bless you all.